Improvements in technology have allowed us to streamline the poultry industry. In nature, a bird lays an egg in the safety of a nest that will hatch into a young bird. In the poultry industry, we try to mimic the same idea. Under highly regulated conditions, a fertilized chicken egg will be transformed from what we recognize as yolk and egg white into a living, breathing bird. Did you know that not all poultry are the same? In our industry, we focus on three types of chickens and two types of turkeys. Commercial broiler breeder parent stock produce offspring that will become broilers. Broilers are birds that will be used for chicken meat. Laying hens, however, are birds that lay table eggs, or the eggs we eat. The turkey industry involves turkey breeders, which are the parents of commercial turkeys, and commercial turkeys that are used for turkey meat. Just as not all poultry are the same, neither are all eggs. Only eggs that are fertilized hatch into a chick, although a hen will lay an egg even though it may not have been fertilized. So where do all these birds begin their journey? It happens behind the scenes at a hatchery. Let's take an inside view of the amazing transformation that goes on inside this facility. Eggs that arrive at the hatchery come from breeder farms. Breeders, remember, are the parents of either chickens or turkeys that will be used for meat products or hens that will lay table eggs. Eggs are delivered to the hatchery by specially designed trucks that control the thermal environment to ensure the survival of the embryo inside the egg. These eggs will develop and grow into either a chick, which is a young chicken, or a poult, which is a young turkey, depending on which type of breeder farm they come from. Turkeys are a fairly specialized industry, so we will focus on chicks for this video. Eggs are the unit of life for the developing embryo. Can you see that white spot in the yolk of this egg? This spot is called the germinal disc. If mating has occurred, this is where the sperm fertilizes the egg inside the hen. It is also where the embryo will begin to form. This takes place about 24 hours before the egg is laid. The embryo starts to grow in the female reproductive tract even before a shell is added. Did you ever wonder why an egg has so many parts? The structures in an egg are vital to the survival of the embryo and ultimately a healthy chick. The yolk provides the embryo with nutrients and water. The albumin, or egg white, not only protects the embryo from damage and bacterial infection, but also provides it with a source of protein. The chalice are twisted, string-like structures that stabilize the yolk in the center of the egg to prevent it from coming in contact against the inside shell wall. If this happened, the embryo could dry out and die. The shell and shell membranes protect the embryo and keep the albumin in the correct position. They allow for gas exchange between the outside and inside environments as an oxygen supply for the embryo. The egg also has an air cell. It is penetrated by the chick's beak during hatching and provides it with its first breath of air. Eggs are placed on trays with the large end up so the air cell is at the top of the egg to ensure proper hatching. Because not all eggs are created equal, it is important that only the highest quality fertile eggs are selected for incubation. The hatchery wants hatching eggs that are clean, have only one yolk, and are free of cracks and shell defects. In Canada, eggs should weigh a minimum of 52 grams to be put in the incubator. The incubation process involves putting eggs in a controlled environment to allow the embryo to develop properly. Smaller eggs are not set in the incubator, nor are large eggs. Very large eggs often contain two yolks and are said to be double yolked. Double yolked eggs will not fit in the incubator trays. If double yolked eggs are set in the incubator, rarely will one chick hatch and never will two chicks hatch. Hens occasionally lay eggs with flat sides, thin shells, or other deformities. Eggs may become stained, cracked, or soiled on the farm. These eggs are also not set in the incubator, since they may not hatch or they may contaminate other chicks when they do hatch. Breeder producers provide nest boxes for the hens to lay their eggs in a clean environment, but sometimes they will lay eggs on the floor. Eggs that have been laid on the floor at the breeder farm tend to become dirty. 
Farmers try their best to stop this by encouraging the hens to lay eggs in nest boxes, which are cleaner and make egg collection easier. At breeding farms, eggs are put onto trays with the large end up to keep the air cell in the right location for proper hatching. At the hatchery, eggs are immediately moved from the shipping area to storage. Eggs are stored in a temperature and humidity controlled storage room until it is time to put them in the incubator. They are kept between 16 and 18 degrees Celsius in storage. The eggs are kept cool to stop the embryo from developing to make sure all the chicks hatch at the same time. Wild birds will purposely avoid sitting on eggs until a certain number have been laid so that the chicks will hatch at the same time. Eggs are moved onto incubation trolleys. For long-term storage, eggs are turned on the trolleys to maintain albumin quality. Eggs are put in incubators which provide the optimal environment for the embryo to develop in the egg. Incubators are kept at a temperature of 38 degrees Celsius. The warm air in the incubator starts the embryo's growth again. The eggs spend the next 18 days in this machine providing enough time for the embryo to develop into a chick. Conditions are kept hot and humid to mimic conditions in nature. Some incubators only house eggs of the same age so the environment can be specific to the period of growth the chicks are in. This is called single stage incubation. Other incubators have eggs of different ages. In multi-stage incubation, older eggs are taken out after 18 days when they are finished growing, and younger eggs are put in the other end of the incubator to replace the ones taken out. Older eggs support the development of the younger ones by giving off heat. This is how the eggs move through the multi-stage incubator. This is a candled egg that is ready to go into the incubator. Candling an egg involves shining a light through it to see what is inside. Notice how there is little to see. This egg has been in the incubator for 18 days and is ready to be taken out. The chick will hatch in approximately 3 days. See how the light doesn't shine through where the chick is? The environment in the incubators is key to making sure all the embryos are ready to hatch when they are removed. Eggs are turned every hour or so to make sure the embryo doesn't contact the eggshell which can lead to dehydration and other problems.